Today, we're combining with The Brew Show and making two vegan meads. Let's get started. So Trent from The Brew Show and I did a podcast a while back and we had a great time. We chatted all about beer making, mead making, lots of things like that. You can go check that podcast out on the channel. During that podcast, we talked a lot about doing a collaborative project. Because I'm more of a mead channel and he wanted a different challenge, we kind of settled on doing a mead. But the twist is he's vegan, so he can't use real honey. This obviously left us a little puzzled on what to do until we found this thing called Unhoney. Unhoney uses coconut nectar to create a similar product to honey without the use of bees. So we established a plan to make two different meads that would pair perfectly together when blended. Trent is gonna make a blueberry mead and I'm gonna make a lemon mead. When we finish our brews, we will give one another a bottle so we can do a taste test to blend them. For the sake of the video, I'm gonna call this thing a mead, even though it doesn't really use real honey. I'm well aware it probably isn't a mead without real honey. The first step was to get some unhoney from Trent because I couldn't find any local to me, so he shipped me about six eight ounce bottles of this honey. Three of them were of the quote, blonde varietal, which they label as delicate and floral. The other three were of the quote, amber varietal, which they describe as warm and fruity. What does the blonde honey taste like? It tastes like it derives from a non-floral source, obviously. It's definitely apparent it has a coconut base with some warm floral-ish note. It has a little buttery side to it, but it's clearly not real honey. What does the amber taste like? The amber has more of a avocado uh, honey darkness to it. It's somewhat malty tasting and has a very kind of dark berry profile. Again, obvious that it's not from real honey and from coconuts. I wanted to do a, a blend of these two different honeys, so I used and settled on the recipe that's on screen. We're gonna use 16 ounces of the blonde unhoney and eight ounces of the amber unhoney to get a different flavor profile. Because we are doing a lemon mead and we don't wanna throw our pH out of whack for the yeast in the primary, we're gonna add the lemon flavoring slash lemon juice and zest in the secondary, possibly even after stabilizing. We're gonna use the Kvaik Hornendal because it's a quick fermenter that can ferment in heat, which I left this outside my sunroom, it produces a tropical flavor and complex aromas that can present as stone fruit, pineapple, and dried fruit leather. This all sounded really interesting for this brew, so I chose it. We started by gathering our ingredients and sanitizing everything. We then took our base recipe and mixed everything together. We're gonna end up with about a gallon of, quote, mead by the end of this. The starting gravity for this was 1.055. After we mixed everything together, we started to let it ferment because I didn't know what sort of nutrition um, would come from this honey. <laughs> we added three grams of Fermade O at the 24 hour mark and two grams of DAP at the 48 hour mark. I put it outside in my sunroom to ferment and it fermented really quick. The primary was only eight days. We then moved it out of the container that it was fermenting in into a bucket and then back into that same container and we did a quick tasting. All right, so we're out of the primary. The current gravity, 1.006. Um, I am pretty confident that this is done fermenting it. The yeast had flocculated down to the bottom pretty well. I did not see any more bubbling. Now, I don't know what's in this honey. There could be non-fermentable sugars, so I'm assuming that's the case. Let's go ahead and taste it. Still very young. I mean, we are about nine days in now, eight or nine days. Hornendal or Kvikes in general are beasts. Oh, that's dry. Whoa, it's a little bit of wa um, a little watery. <laughs> it's definitely gonna need some carbonation. Uh, definitely some honey to back sweeten with it. Or sorry, unhoney to back sweeten with it. You can tell that they're trying to get like some floral notes, but having had a really high quality honey, it's hard to emulate that without actually using bees. It's very young. I mean, super, super young. Not really yeasty, which is nice. Again, that Kvike has flocculated out pretty well. Um, here's the next plan. Actually, 
Let's just go on to the next steps. So now we're gonna take and add four lemons worth of juice to this brew to attempt to get our lemon flavor. We're also planning on adding a bit of orange zest to get a more tropical note. Spoilers, the orange zest was super strong. We stabilized the meat at this point and let it set for a few days. We then came back and added about eight ounces of blonde honey to this to back sweeten it. I noticed that the orange zest side was too strong, so I zested a lemon and added that in an attempt to get back to a more lemon tasting mead. We then transferred it into a keg and force carbonated it at 30 PSI for three days. I shared some bottles with Trent and we decided it was time for the big tasting. Here we go. Hey Garrett, thanks for joining me here. What's really up Trent? What's going on, man? <laughs> I appreciate you uh, coming to me with this uh, challenge. I know we talked on your podcast uh -huh. and we had a little conversation afterwards and this idea, you know, when I mentioned on the podcast that there is a vegan mead, you know, the idea immediately came to me and I'm glad mm -hmm. that you're down to give this a shot. Oh, I mean, if you know my channel, I, I'm a, willing to try about anything. And this was pretty fun. The honey you sent was really honey quotes around. I don't know, you know, yeah. <laughs> was really interesting. And so uh, it was a lot of fun to play with. So I'm, I'm excited to taste yours. We're going to start with yours, right? Yeah, yeah. Let's, let's give it, pour some up and Sweet. give it a taste. I haven't even, I haven't opened yours. I've, I've been waiting. Okay. So I, these uh, have traveled. So yeah, yeah. I was curious to see if the effervescence like held in it or. Oh, look at that color, dude. Yeah. So while you pour, I'll talk a little bit about what I did. So yeah. um, I started, you know, I sent you six of the um, vegan honeys and I had six as well, but I ended, only ended up using like four and a half of them. Uh -huh. And um, I used like all three of the blonde, the lighter color, and then like one and a half of the amber. Mm -hmm. And um, that got me to like 1060 uh, for a two gallon batch pretty quickly. And then um, you had mentioned to me, like, because I was using the blueberry, that I should throw in a uh, pectic enzyme, which yes. is kind of a, it's something that I'm aware of from like my winemaking days, but I haven't used in years. Mm -hmm. And I'm really glad I did. I feel like it really helped extract a lot of the juices and flavors from yes. it. Yes. Yeah. How, exa big, how exactly big fan. Does, yeah, how exactly does that work? Do you know? A pectic enzyme uh, breaks down the fruit skins, essentially allowing the juices to be able to get out of things easier, especially like uh, blueberries being a berry that has a really like a grape skin, you know, it kind of contains all the liquid. This just breaks them down. And essentially it's uh, a way of like uh, pressing the fruit without actually having a press. And so it just, it just rips up the fruit skins and then lets all the juice flow. And it is perfect. Yeah, it worked great. I mean, so I used uh, wild frozen blueberries that I bought and I just like let them thaw out and then I added the enzyme into it, let it sit for like an hour. And then I tossed them into like a, uh, kind of like a muslin cloth bag mm -hmm. that I put in um, to the honey water. And then um, I added some nutrients. Um, this was my first time, usually when I do nutrients, I just toss the whole amount in, you know, but watching some of your videos, I've seen like staggered nutrient additions, mm -hmm. additions and how that can be important. So that's what I did here. I did, I added a little bit for like the first three days of fermentation. And then also another new thing for me was using uh, D47. I've never mm. used that yeast for me. So that was completely new. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's a fun one. You sent me a message uh, kind of in the middle of yours talking about, um, you know, you were fermenting at, I can't remember what temp, but you were like trying to keep it pretty, pretty uh, not room temp. Yeah. Remember yeah. What just, your I ass? Wanna, yeah. I want to say, oh man, I want to say like 65. It's just like a little bit below. Cool. Um, and it, yeah, it fired off like it's so after day one, my airlock was already filled with like blueberry honey. <laughs> so then I went to a blow off tube and even that was, you know, filling up. So yeah, it was an active fermentation for sure. Well, here we go. I want to try it now. This looks yeah, yeah. super good. Go. I'm, a, I'm excited. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> oh yeah. The, uh, the, what's interesting about this, uh, I'm going to keep air quoting this honey but is, uh, <laughs> It, you know, they really tried to to pronounce a floral side for mm -hmm. for honey, without of course using the bee side. And um, I think that I think it's coconut nectar is like the main sugar source found in that. Uh, yeah, in the blonde one, I think. And then it was like palm sugar, I think, in the uh -huh. other one. Yeah, which I was super curious to see if any of that would come through, or if it would just all ferment out and like leave. Yeah. Mine went dry. 
I don't know about yours. Mine actually, mine went really dry, but I don't know when I taste this, it has like some sweetness. I feel like left mm -hmm. to it. It's not like completely bone dry. But it's got is. like earthy, um, I mean, blueberry earthy sweetness mm -hmm. to it. It's kind of, kind of fun. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, dude, I, that's super good. And what I love about this, um, in a moment, we're going to like blend ours to hopefully make a, uh, super great product <laughs> or not who knows we'll find out but <laughs> right dude i'm excited this is super good i love blueberries blueberries are like one of my favorite Same. things to play with with mead and so it's a lot of fun to yeah. especially to have someone else's blueberry mead yeah yeah well i mean that means a lot because this is my first ever like attempt at anything like this so yeah and how do you think it like compares to like a regular honey mead like as far as the flavor it's or it's missing the the floral stuff is not, is not there. You can't you just can't emulate that. The what the bees do to you know they pollinate on whatever they're pollinating on. They they produce a, such a uh, interesting floral source. There is the sugar content, uh, which is nice, and there's a little bit, maybe a little bit of the that floral I'm talking about. But it's like if a regular meat is 100, percent we're at like 25. So we're missing. That's kind of the biggest drawback of this. Um, but I think you've done a great job. I mean, it, it's, it tastes really good. Pretty sweet. Yeah. I mean, it's it's very drinkable, especially for I think it's like eight and a half percent. Like, mm -hmm. I wouldn't like know that you know just drinking it. But I'm I'm pretty pleased. I mean, <laughs> it was like a complete shot in the dark. I really had no idea if this stuff would even like make anything drinkable. So I'm glad right. to have something that is this good. Yeah. All right. Well, let's talk about mine. So let's go for it. When we talked about our idea of blending. Mm -hmm. We kind of mentioned what if we, you know, what, what two kind of fruits would go well together. And the, my thought was blueberry and then maybe like lemon. And I, cause I feel like that's something you see in other areas of the world. Mm -hmm. So that's my side was the lemon side. And I, I have, I wrote orange on this because you'll find out that it has a little bit of an orange zestiness that wasn't quite my intention but it, it picked it up and it's kind of interesting. So I started with um, eight ounces, let's see, 16 ounces of the lighter honey mm -hmm. and then eight ounces of the amber honey. And that basically made a quote traditional mead in that okay. it just was the honey and the water and the yeast in the beginning in which I used, gotta go back to my notes. I used, uh, oh, this is a Kvike Hornendal. I don't know if- Oh, that's right. Like. Yeah, yeah. I fermented out in the heat with this thing and it was like 98 degrees. So it went through, it burned through all the sugars there. I gave it nutrients and did all the thing. Um, then I stabilized it cause I didn't want any more fermentation to mm -hmm. occur. And I added, my intention was to get about, uh, I think it was a half a cup of lemon juice. If I remember my records and then some lemon zest. And I was like, if I put a little orange zest, that'll also help give some, Tropical feel. Citrusy. Well, <laughs> that that orange zest was about twice as powerful as the lemon zest. So, <laughs> hence why it's got orange in the name now. Yeah, it's yeah. A little bit of both. But there's a zestiness. It came back in uh, back sweetened with more of the amber honey. So it's got some of the dark profile and the light. Got so it. 50-50. Like okay. And did you stabilize it before back sweetening it? Yes, I did. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you got it. That's one of those things you got to make sure and do because if you don't, then the yeast are like, "Hey, let's party!" You know, right too. <laughs> yeah. So you got to kill right. the party before they can. Uh, keep yeah. It. All right, let's open it up. Let's do it. Ooh. I'm a little worried about. I was hoping the carbonation would stay. We'll see. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. There's the, oh, oh, there's that the color. But it's mine also stayed here. <laughs> Super orange, at least it, from my perspective. Uh -huh. You know. Yeah. That's cool. All right. All right. Did we do it? Let's do it. Cheers. Cheers. Oh, wow. And immediately, the first thing I noticed is like the com very different mouthfeel between the two of these. Yeah. Yours has, has a much more full mouthfeel. And then the sweetness. And mm -hmm. it's really nice. This is, I like, it's a good combination. Like, you had me a little bit worried that it was going to be a, a lot of orange, but it's like a good amount. It's like, yeah, this is really good. It reminds me now I'm thinking about it a little bit of like a, a 
hint into like an orange, orange creamsicle. Stuff. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm. Yeah, that's super interesting. It's definitely sweeter, but mm-hmm. I do think that will that was intentional because when I was thinking lemon, um, dry, a, a not sweet lemon flavor might be kind of overwhelming. And so I was mm-hmm. like, well, what can I do? Okay, well, I'll just back sweeten it. So this does have a fair amount of sweetening with it. Yeah, um, I think the final gravity was like 1.0. I think I saw one two on my notes. Okay. So 1.015. So it's got a little sweetness to it. Get yeah. Me. But it's not like cloying sweet. It's like a good level. Like it just makes it more crushable. Honestly, <laughs> it's really yeah. good. Dude. Okay. Well, how about this? I, I have a third glass. I don't know if you got if you brought. A third I got a third glass, glass too. I got. Okay. One. Yeah. So. As far as ratios, I don't know how to do this well, other than to say like a 50-50. That's, that's kind of what I'm going to do. I'm that sure there's good. math, math we I'm can gonna, do, but... Alright, I'm just going to drink a little more of yours to get it even. <laughs> oh yeah, I need to plan a little better. Alright, I think I'm ready. Alright, ready? Try not to I'm make ready. a mess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right on top of my computer. <laughs> So now we have this blend, blueberry and lemon and a little bit of orange in there too. Yeah. Color, I, I think it's a pretty cool color. Yeah, it's really, like, it's got like a cherry tone to it almost, like a little bit of that. Yeah. All right, here we go. Right, Cheers. Let's go. Cheers. <laughs> Ooh. Interesting. Yeah. It has like the best of both worlds. Like it does. It really. I mean, is as much as like like is like obvious, but it has like it balances. It takes like that sweetness and the dryness from mine, kind of brings them together. But then also the marry of the citrus and the bear, the blueberry is really it's really yeah. nice. The like the earthy blueberry side that's like that darkness, and then you have like mm-hmm. the lemon and orange up here. But then I feel like you get a little bit of that honey character in the middle of all of that kind of yeah. sandwich that's uh provide a sweetness of course a little bit of floral side but it's pretty good yeah I th- this is great i think you're right i think like the fruits that we added bring like what is probably missing from if we were just to do like a straight you know honey mead yeah so i think that was a great idea <laughs> yeah dude this is uh, this is good and i yeah. think blueberry and and Lemon are going to be, or pair well together, and mm-hmm. I mean, I can, I think we can definitely confirm that at this point. Yes, for sure. And I'm glad that you sent me three bottles, because I'll be doing this all week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, seriously, though. This, I, and I got a whole other one of these. This is going to be great. Yeah. <laughs> I This was such a fun experiment, and uh, not only just from getting to do, like, I feel like it's a double uh, win, 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 all these things, because mm-hmm. I got to try some really interesting uh, variation on honey, so to speak. And then mm-hmm. I've never done this. I've never uh, brewed a beverage to blend it with someone else's. And it yeah. kind of added a challenge of like, well, I want mine to be good standalone, but I also want it to be helpful to this other person. And that was yes. a lot of fun. Yeah, yeah. I love the fact that they complement each other. They're not very contrasting. They bring something different to the game and make an awesome final product. Yeah, <laughs> dude. I, well. I can definitely say this for the people who are watching my video right now. If you would like to watch Trent's video on this and how he made his brew and his his first mead, really, um, you can go find that on his channel and a bunch of other super solid brewing based videos. I mean, the dude is putting out amazing quality content, and I'm gonna I'm gonna chunk you that way as fast as I can to go check him out. So, this is good stuff, man. Appreciate it. Well, Trent, it has been a <laughs> blast. I um I look forward to hopefully doing some more stuff. Maybe not the same thing, of course. Uh, you know, being a vegan and you know the whole not being able to do real honey thing is is ch- a challenge. But maybe there's a world where we brew a beer and we do like a braggot style with this yeah. kind of honey and see what happens. So maybe we'll would... we'll uh, figure something else else out to do in the future. But it's been a blast, man. Yeah, I'm totally down for whatever you got in plan. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right, dude. Until well, next time. Yeah, yeah. Thanks again for doing this with me. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we'll see you again soon. Cheers. Right. Cheers. Cheers.